Well, good morning and happy Friday. Welcome to Matins on this Friday of the fourth week in Lent. Thank you for being with me today. Our scriptures today are Psalm number 22. This is the psalm that Jesus quotes on the cross. Uh, we're going to move into Jeremiah chapter 23, and we'll finish Romans chapter 8. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Would you please pray with me? Bless us, O God, with a reverent sense of your presence, that we may be at peace and may worship you with all our mind and spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is near to those who call upon him. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. O come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is near to those who call upon him. O oh, come, let us worship him. Psalm is number 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? O oh, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer and by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me to trust you at my mother's breasts. On you was I cast from my birth. And from my mother's womb, you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encompass me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs encompass me. A company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far off. O you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword. Save my precious, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. And stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. And he has not hidden his face from him, but has heard when he cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. 
the afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before you, for kingship belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow down, shall bow all who go down to the dust, even the one who could not keep himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn that he has done it. Let us pray. Father, when your son was handed over to torture and felt abandoned by you, he cried out from the cross. Then death was destroyed and life was restored. By his death and resurrection, save the poor, lift up the downtrodden, break the chains of the oppressed, that your church may sing your praises through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 23. We're going to read verses 1 through 8. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who care for my people, you have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for your evil deeds, declares the Lord. Then I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will set shepherds over them who will care for them, and they shall fear no more nor be dismayed, neither shall any be missing, declares the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when they shall no longer say, as the Lord lives, who brought up the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but as the Lord lives, who brought up and led the offspring of the house of Israel out of the north country and out of all the countries where he had driven them, then they shall dwell in their own land. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, so... We've already been reading about the bad leaders, right? This is one more statement about that. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. Oof. Woe to them, declares the Lord. Therefore, here's God's word concerning the shepherds. You have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. God knows. Behold, I will attend to you. You've not attended to them. I will attend to you for your evil deeds. Right? This is not neglect. This is downright malicious behavior. The shepherds, the people who were supposed to help God's, the, the, the leaders who were supposed to help God's people to live the way that God had written down the law for them to live, these people twisted it. They walked away from God. They started worship. They led the people to false idols and pagan gods. This is not going to be dealt with well. I will attend to you. And then I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them. Right? Right? This is future. This is, and I'll bring them back to their fold. So there will be faith, a faithful remnant. There always is, right? Even, even with Noah, eight people out of the world, there was still a remnant. I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I've driven them, right? So the first thing that happens is they're driven away from the promised land, the promised land that God gave to them. God drove them out of it using the Babylonians. But eventually, 
He'll take the faithful remnant out of all those different countries, bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. Huh. Kind of like he did with Joseph and Jacob and his sons. Brought them to Egypt, made a great nation out of them, and brought them out in the Exodus. And I will, God says, I will set shepherds over them who will care for them. Faithful shepherds who will do it right. They shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall any be missing, declares the Lord. God's going to make it right, right? Nobody will be missing. Behold, the days are coming when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. See the capital B? Branch of the Lord. Okay, it's this reference here. Oh, yeah. Matches up with Isaiah. Okay, he shall reign as king. So David, God promised that David would always sit on the throne, meaning if it wasn't David, it would be one of his offspring who would be king, who will reign and deal wisely, execute justice and righteousness in the land, the kind of king that God wants for his people. And in the days of this king, this branch, Judah will be saved. Israel will dwell securely. There's the two kingdoms. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Well, now, who does that sound like, right? Behold, the days are coming when they shall no longer say, right? Does this sound familiar? We've covered this once, right? The exodus will be replaced by this new exodus. Right? It's not who brought the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but who brought and led the offspring of the house of Israel out of the north country and out of all the countries where he had driven them. Right? Then they shall dwell in their own. So he's going to bring them back to the Holy Land. This will be the new exodus. This will be the new fulfillment of the covenant that God made. God made a promise. They will have this promised land. This, this previous generation and the ones before it messed it up. So they lost the blessing. Now he's going to give it to their offspring who will be righteous. And the righteous will be fruitful and multiply. Okay. Let's do Romans. All right. This is Romans chapter 8. I'm going to read verses 28 to 39. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. In order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. Those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died, more than that, who was raised who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. So. So this was the spirit. This is yes, the, how yesterday ends. Talked about hope. Talked about our weakness and how when we can't pray, the spirit prays for us. 
The Spirit sees, searches hearts, knows what is the mind of the Spirit. The Spirit intercedes for the saints, prays in accordance with the will of God. All right. And this is where we pick up today. For those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose, God's purposes are good. When you love God and serve him, these things work together for good. Even in the face of tragedy, God's people come together and surround the victims of the tragedy and do good. God doesn't promise there won't be tragedy. God promises that he will be with us in tragedy and that through the tragedy, he will be with us and others in the body of Christ will come together to bear one another's burdens, right? To help, to comfort, to walk alongside. God can take the worst situation and bring good out of it. For those who are called according to his purpose. All right. Now, this is an interesting, an interesting passage here. All right. Hmm. All right. Believers who are loved by God, right? That's what we're talking about here. Believers, not everybody. Believers who are loved by God and who love God. All right. Even the accidents of history are God working for our good. God planned salvation in advance. This is his purpose. He knew that we would fall, and he knew that he would have to save us. If you think I'm on this for any length of time, you will start. It's mind-blowing what God had planned, but he knew he was going to have to save us. Gave us lots of chances. All right. Um, the spirit across history has called us by the gospel, right? Called. Called. Now, this foreknew, those whom he foreknew, this is not referring to God's advanced knowledge of what will happen to both good and evil people. God knows this. He knows he is all-knowing, right? That's not what this is. This is referring to his Gracious choice, it says, his gracious choice of those who are called what we call the elect. First Peter chapter one. We say predestination. God in his grace alone made a decision beforehand. Okay, we're not talking about. Um, I'm not going to get into the. the the Calvinist understanding of predestination. That's not what we're getting into here, right? But he knew who would be elect. He knew who would who would accept his gift, right? Those whom he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, right? His son is the ultimate perfect human being. His son is who we were created to be like. Right? And if we are conformed to the image of his son, that means Christ's son would just be the firstborn of many, that we would then be brothers with him. Remember the discussion we had about um, don't look at this as gender. Okay, Look at this as, um, remember we were talking about heirs yesterday, right? Um, heirs, that is sons, in having the same right, whether you're a man or woman, you will be treated as a son because a son has a right to the inheritance. That's what we're getting at here, okay? All right, so Jesus would just be the firstborn among many brothers because 
if you want to be at this level in God's eyes, you have to be conformed to the image of the firstborn son. And those and these people who are who are conformed to him, he called. And those he called, he justified. That is, he made them righteous. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Right? This is what eternal life will look like. Right? You're called by the gospel, justified by Christ's righteousness, glorified in, in eternity with him because of what Christ has done, because of the work of Christ. Okay? So what are we going to say about all this? God's for us. Who can be against us? Probably could stop right there, right? That says it all. But remember, he didn't even spare his own son, but gave him up for everyone. If he's going to give up his own son, how is he not going to with him Give us all things graciously. If he's not even going to withhold his own son's life, why would he hold anything back? Why would he hold anything back? Who shall bring any charge against God's God's elect? Who's going to accuse? So, remember Satan's original when as as um, as a member of the heavenly host before Satan fell from grace. His job was the accuser, and he has kept that duty. He still does this. Oh, you're not worthy. God can't love you. Right? That's Satan's voice. Uh uh. Is he going to bring that against you? Wrong. You don't make yourself righteous. God justifies you. God justifies you. Who's going to condemn you? The Son, Christ Jesus, is the one who died. And he didn't just stay dead. He was raised and is now seated at the right. Remember, the right hand is the position of honor, right? The right hand of God. He is indeed interceding for us. He's the one saying to God, I died for him. I died for her. I died for them. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Tribulation, diff times of trial. Stress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sword, warfare, enemies. As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all, all the day long. This is Psalm 44, right? We're regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, Paul says no. In all these things, all these things and more. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us, right? We are more than conquerors. Nothing compares to this. I am sure neither death nor life, angels nor rulers, right? These are messengers. These are kings. Things present nor things in the future. Not powers, right, nor depth. Anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. Not even death itself, or life for that matter. Nothing can separate us from the love of God because of Christ. That is the gospel truth. And I get an amen. All right. So tomorrow will be starting chapter nine. Yeah. All right. Let's conclude our liturgy. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. Now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. Let justice roll down like water and righteousness like an overflowing stream. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. 
he promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his, pardon me, his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let justice roll down like water, and righteousness like an overflowing stream. Let us pray. Father, our source of life, you know our weakness. May we reach out with joy to grasp your hand and walk more readily in your ways. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome in adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. and Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. And that concludes our matins for this Friday. Thank you for spending this time in the word with me. And thank you for giving back to God a little bit of the day he's given to you. Um. I'm hopeful that we can continue with our normal schedule for tomorrow. Um, some things have occurred in the last couple of days that might throw that um, off, but um, I just don't know yet. So uh, once uh, plans for taking care of our family in need uh, solidify, then I'll know more. But for now, let's plan on we'll still have responsive prayer on Saturday afternoon. So... Uh, look for that tomorrow, and if not, I'll put an announcement out. But uh, anyway, we'll just have to take it a day at a time, okay? Meantime, please pray for the Murphy family um, in their time of loss, and uh, I thank you for those of you who have reached out to them in support. Um, so again, thank you for being with me today, uh, for spending this time in the Word, and thank you for giving back to God a little bit of the day He's given to you. Um, I wish you a blessed rest of your day, and until we can be together again, whenever that is, may God bless and keep you.